Hi. Still staying strong within disease? Is it a part of you? Get it in, soak it in, and make it a way of your maths and mathematical thinking skills. Now let's move on to sums like this. As I said, when you see an equation, what does it call for? It calls for a solution. Yes. And if you look at this, x to the power of 3 is 8. What is x? Now, earlier on, we had the powers up. But now we have the number here is x. A little different, right? Now, what we need to do is we've got to create a power that is a 3. And what is 8? You know that 8 is 2 to the power of 3. And once you've seen that link, you've created that link. Oh, you're 3 and you're 3. So, x must be 2. Alright, the left hand side must be equal to right hand side as the powers are both the same. So we said therefore, therefore your x is 2. Create that link. Now if you look at the next sum, again we need to create a link. But sometimes, as I said, there are a few approaches in doing a sum. Like if I have x to the power of 1 quarter is 16. And you know that 16 is 2 to the power of 4. And you said, oops, oops, this is 1 over 4. And that's 1, 2 to the power of 4. What do you do next then? Well, there is a solution out. We can change this power to 1. Alright, we can change the power here to 1. We've got to do a minor surgery. What is that mathematical surgery all about? Alright, I'm going to introduce this term, surgery, mathematical surgery. Well, feel like a doctor operating on this problem. What do we do? We want to change this to 1. You're multiplying this with a 4. What you do to your left hand side, you have to do the same thing to your right hand side. So you said, alright, what you did here, you got to multiply by 4. Got it? Alright, what you do to the left hand side, you do the same thing to your right hand side. Then they're balanced. So you can see that a 4 and a 4 goes off, you get x to the power of 1. As here, 4 times 4 is 16. Ooh, so that's your x. 2 to the power of 16. It means 2 is multiplied 16 times. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Go on. And that's when you get the answer. When a number is huge, you just write it this way. Perfectly fine. Not necessary to write the 1 down. x is 2 to the power of 16. What we've done is a little minor mathematical surgery. We'll do more of it as we move on. Now let's look at this again. We said, oops, we've got a minus 1 quarter. It's a similar to that, but I just put a minus there. And you look at it and said, alright, x to the power of minus 1 quarter. 16, you have 2 to the power of 4, or you can even say 4 to the power of 2, perfectly fine. All we need to do is we've got to change this number to 1, positive number. So what do we multiply with? Minus 4. Great, because a minus and a minus will give us a plus. What you do here, you do the same thing here. So a minus times a minus is a plus. The 4 cancels off, you get an x. And what you get here is 2 to the power of minus 16. 4 times minus 4 is minus 16. And that means if we were to express it in a positive form, 
x will be equals to 1 over 2 to the power of 16. You got that? Good. Now look at this. It's getting a little bit more complex. This power is only for x. Don't be too generous to share it with 2. No, the power of 2 is just 1. 2 thirds is only for x. Now remove the 2 over. At times, when you get over, it becomes a divide. So you've got x to the power of 2 thirds is 18 divided by 2. You get a 9, right? And now you say, all right, x to the power of 2 thirds and 9 is 3 squared. All right, my dear little doctors, are you ready for a surgery? What do we need to do? Think about it. We have 2 thirds there. We want the power to become 1. What do we need to do? Yes, we multiply it by 3 over 2. Excellent. You multiply it by 3 over 2. And what you do here, you do the same thing here. Have you got it? All right. You multiply it by 3 over 2 because you wanted to change the power to 1. Look at it and say, ah, I've got to make this power become 1. And the best number is an inverted number, right? So you can see it, cancel, cancel. You cancel it, you get x to the power of 1. And here, you can cancel this too, you get 3 cubed. And 3 cubed is something that you could work out the answer. And that answer is 3 times 3 times 3, 27. You've got that. Got it? Great. Now let's look at this sum. We've got x to the x 10 to the power of x is 0 0.0001. Is that number related to 10? Now we just want to find out what is x. We've got all right, please, I'm just jumbling up numbers. All right, earlier on, I put the power as x, and then now I made the number x to be the number where you need to find. So you're switching here and there. So I want you to be able, to be very agile in mathematics, be able to move from one form of a question to another form with ease. If you look at this, this is 10 to the power of all right, you want to find out how many times you got to move this. 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So this is actually 10 to the power of minus 4. If you're not so familiar, it's 1 over 10 to the power of, is 1 tenth, 10 to the power of minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Or you can put it as 1 upon 10 to the power of 4, tenth, hundredth. 1,000, 10,000, 10,000 is 1 over 10 to the power of 4, which can be expressed as 10 to the power of minus 4. So now, this goes easy for you. X is equal to minus 4. Got it? Great. Let's look at the next sum. What is 1 over 81? 3 81, 3 to the power of 4, 3, 9, 27, 27 times 3, 81. Always have your, at your tables, all right, your indices tables at your fingertips. The maths becomes so easy. So x is 5 over 4 and 81 is 3 to the power of 4. If you don't know, you can break 81 down to find out what is it is. Do a prime factorization. You see, you get 2, 8 divided by 3 is 2, remainder 2. 21, you get a 7. Divide it again by 3, you get a 9. Divide by 3, you get a 3. Divide by 3, you get a 1. You can see that 81 is 3 to the power of 4. What does 1 over a number. 
if you remember your laws of indices, all right? So we can use that and say, hey, you are none other than 3 to the power of minus 4. Applying the law of indices a to the power of minus n is 1 over a n. Now we look at this. We want to change that 5 over 4 to 1. Remember, you've got to do a little surgery. What do we do? We multiply both sides by 5 over 4. So when you multiply here by the power by 5, 4 over 5, I'm sorry, because you invert the number. What you do to this side, you do the same thing here. You multiply it by 4 over 5. You can cancel the powers and so your x will be looking like this. 3 to the power of minus 16 over 5. That's what it means. 3 to the power of minus 16 over 5. Now you can in fact put it in a positive form. Alright, which is 1 over 3 and the power up there is 16 over 5. Alright, you can change it to positive. Let's look at this. Any number to the power of 0 will be a 1, right? Didn't we learn it? When you see a 1, it's the same as saying a, a 1, 0, 2, the power of a 0. Look at that. And that's a very simple diagnosis we can do. And we can say you are 1, 0, 2, the power of 2x plus 1. You're both equal. So it means that the powers are both equal. This and this are equal. 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. 2x is equal to minus 1 and x is a minus half. Got it? Alright, we said we looked at 1 and we said you are 1, 0, 2 to the power of 0. And from there we applied. Now this is a little bit complex. All we need to do is to change it to its link. Alright, the link is changing 27 to trees. And what you've got here on the right hand side, 3x minus 1. 27 is 3 to the power of 3. Here is x over 3. Cancel the 3 off and you've got 3 to the power of minus 2. Look at the two numbers and you said, oh, 3 to the power of 4x minus 1 is equal to up minus the down. Applying the laws of indices AM over AN, you take away the power. So the x minus minus 2, right? x minus minus 2. And what does the 2 minus become? Plus. Now that they both are 3, the powers become equal. 4x minus 1 is equal to x plus 2. Move the x over, we've got a 3x. Bring the 1 over, 2 plus 1 is 3. And that means that your x is equal to 1. You saw that? So, no matter what, it's not as difficult as what is taught to be, right? We can move on and let's look at this form, the way it's being asked. a to the power of x is 4, that's what you're given. And you're also given that b to the power of y is 5. What is a to the power of 2x plus b to the power of 2y? What is the value? This is not an equation. What they're asking you is to evaluate. Work out the answer. Evaluate. What is the answer? Now you know that a to the power of x times 2, you get 2x, do you? And b to the power of 2y, you put a y here, times 2, you get a 2y. And what is a to the power of x? 4. And you get a 4 squared. And what is b to the power of y? 5. 5 squared. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 
a simple addition will tell you it's 30, 36, 30, 35, 41. That's your solution. Got it? Now let's look at a to the power of 3x. How do you work that out? And let's look at a little bit more. Is this a little bit of a variety in indices? Alright? If you look at a to the power of 3x, same thing, applying your laws of indices, ax power 3, by. a to the power of x is 4, 4 cubed, minus b to the power of y, 5, 4 times 4 times 4, 64, minus your 5, you get 59, solve it. Let's look at a to the power of minus x. You're given that a to the power of x is 4. What is a to the power of minus x? Now, let's express it in the laws of indices. 2. The b, y, please take it separately. What is a to the power of x? It is 4 plus 2. What is b, y? It is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus a quarter, you get 10 and 1 quarter. Do you see how easy it's become? To a to the power minus x, express it using your laws of indices. The b to the power y, remember it's only for b, the y is only for b. So b to the power y, you know what it is. So that's 5. 5 times 2 is 10. And this is 1 upon 4. A simple addition. Got it? Now please, look at this. Is it very different? Is it doable? Yes, you know it. This is none other than 4. And what is this? It is 5. When they are side by side, what is the operation between them? It is a multiplication. Yes. And 4 times 5 is 20. Got it? And if you look at this again, we've got what we did here. This is 20 and 20 squared. They put a squared there. 20 times 20 is a 400. Got it? Now, you're getting to be more comfortable, right? And we can take on a little bit more difficult sums. Right? Great. Keep it up.